Greetings to you all as we join for worship this morning. Uh, welcome to you that are here in person and to most of you who are joining us online. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we join the worship of God, it is our tradition that we, the people of Wesley Geelong, as many origins as we are, acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which Wesley is built. We pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Friends, we are continuing to follow the theme of the journey in which we reflect on the experiences of our own journey, but also learning how we could make our journey meaningful for ourselves and for others. Let's worship God. We have come a long way. We stumbled and fall. We weigh down by disappointments and frustrations. We cannot stop. We have to keep going. But where are we going? When we will get there? Are we going in circles? God says there is a place for us. You just have to trust. Lord of mercy and hope, help us to cling to you in all our trials and tribulations. Hold us gently and bring us to a place of new beginnings where we will find healing and strength to serve you in the times ahead. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we will sing, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. Now let's join with our hearts and minds in our prayers. Patient God, sometimes we just don't understand. We don't get it. We want instant gratification of all our needs. We don't want to have 
We don't want to have to follow directions or instructions. We are impatient. We want you to come down from heaven and solve our problems. We don't want to have to think about the problems and we are hesitant to create solutions. When we try to wiggle out of difficult situations, we get even further bound up in our own problems. You ask us to trust you. You invite us to lean on your strong arms of comfort and support. You set us on our feet and give us gifts and talents to use for healing and hope. All these wonderful things you do for us, and still we whine and complain. Please forgive us, Lord, as Jesus reminded the disciples to trust in God's commandments and guidance. So we are called to place our trust and confidence in your presence. Heal our wounds, calm our spirits and souls, challenge and encourage our service to humankind. And when at last we enter the land of promise, help us to truly give thanks and rejoice and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now let's hear the first uh, reading uh, for this morning. Thank you, Jane. And the first reading this morning is from Joshua 3, verses 7 to 17. The Lord said to Joshua, This day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, so that they may know that I will be with you as I was with Moses. You are the one who shall command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant. When you come to the edge of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. Joshua then said to the Israelites, Draw near and hear the words of the Lord your God. Joshua said, By this you shall know that among you is the living God, who without fail will drive out from before you the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Girgashites, Amorites, and the Jebusites. The Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth is going to pass before you into the Jordan. So now, select twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. When the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, rest in the waters of the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan flowing from above shall be cut off. They shall stand in a single heap. When the people set out from their tents to cross over the Jordan, the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant were in front of the people. Now the Jordan overflows all its banks throughout the time of harvest. So when those who bore the Ark had come to the Jordan and the feet of the priests bearing the Ark were dipped into the edge of the water, the waters flowing from above stood still rising up in a single heap far off at Adam, the city that is beside Zarathon, while those flowing toward the Sea of the Arabah, the Dead Sea, were wholly cut off. Then the people crossed over opposite Jericho. While all Israel were crossing over on dry ground, the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan until the entire nation finished crossing over the Jordan. Thank you, Jan. There's some beautiful words in that reading, but you did very well. <laughs> uh, given that we are starting to look at the end of this lockdown, I mean, there's so much to, um, to have in consideration as we plan our way. So I, I thought I would you know, just uh, put an activity in, in the bulletin or the order of service for, to, for today, just um, spark our thinking and maybe start to, um, uh, 
to have some plan in place. Uh, what that, you know, the end of lockdown, what does it look like for us as a community? So I put activity there as a, you know, plan a way to cross the river. Because it has, um, I'm not sure you've seen this before, it has uh, risks. A boy has to cross the river uh, and a boy has a, a bag of rice, a chicken and a dog with a small canoe. So a boy has to cross the river in a small canoe and he can only take one item at a time. The challenge is he has to choose the right item to take with him at a time because there are risks involved. For example, if he takes the, God, uh, the dog first, there is a risk of chicken eating the rice. If he takes the rice first, then there is a possibility the dog will have chicken parma for lunch. <clears throat> but if, if he takes the, um, the chicken first, of course the dog won't eat the rice. But he has to choose what's next because there will be a risk on the other end, whether it's a dog or the chicken. <laughs> um, so, so he has to carefully plan his trip to the other side safely. So how would you plan it for him? Remember, he cannot take more than one item at a time. All right, we're going to sing our next song, Thanks to God, whose word has spoken while we're thinking of the activity at the same time. And maybe after the song, we can talk about it, or maybe someone has an idea, or maybe some of you who are watching online has already worked it out how to, to plan this trip on the other side of the river. Does anyone want to have a go at um, that plan or that activity? How would you plan the trip for him?
I suggest taking at least taking the chicken over first. Yeah. Because the dog's not going to be interested in the rice. <laughs> yes. Um, and then coming back, but by taking either the dog or the rice over and leaving them there with the chicken, you're in trouble. Mm. So you've probably got to bring the chicken back. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then take the rice over. And then so the dog and the rice have been on the other side. Yeah. And come back and get the chicken. Well done. Does that well done. That's the plan. <laughs> Looks like uh, Keith has been working on this last night. <laughs> but that's that's the right way. Um, first, you you take the, the chicken because the dog is not interested in, in the bag of rice. So you leave the chicken on the other side and come and pick up um, the rice. You drop the rice there and pick up the chicken and bring the chicken back. So because you're taking the dog this time, so it's the same on the other side that the dog will not, will not be interested in a sack of rice. And then come back and take the chicken. Hopefully that's what I'm, everyone else um, uh, thought or plan. All right, let's hear um, the second uh, second reading from Matthew. And the gospel reading is from Matthew twenty three, verses one to twelve. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore, do whatever they teach you and follow it. But do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on the shoulders of others. But they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honour at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher and you are all students. And call no one your father on earth, for you have one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. All who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. The activity which we attempted to work out has given us something to think about, but it is a concept that reminds us the importance of thinking our way through life while we are on the journey, especially where we are and where we can now see the light at the end of the tunnel after many months in the lockdown. The reading from the Old Testament is talking about the divine presence which helps to lead the Israelites through many challenges of the wilderness in their journey. And the supernatural event uh, which uh, we read this morning reminds us the crossing in the middle of the Red Sea on foot under Moses' um, leadership. But the question is, have you ever encountered such miracle in your life, if that's what we're supposed to expect? Well, we may never see it in our lifetime as an individual or as a group, 
But does it mean we never encountered or will never encounter the divine presence of God? I think that expecting something big and miraculous can discourage us to appreciate the simple things that keeps us going each day. According to the story, and we have learned from the history associated with the stories, there is an emphasis on leadership by certain people, naming the priests in this text. So in a sense, the leadership or the, of priesthoods shows the divine presence of God. And as long as the ark is with them, God is in control. But I ask myself this question, is it still our understanding today? The equivalent of the ark in our time is a church building. And is it our understanding today that God dwells in our church buildings? Is it still our understanding that we do not have a personal relationship with God unless there is a priest, pastor, or even minister involved. I think that we often missed our, in our reading of the biblical stories um, is the participation and the role of the followers. Most of the times the focus is always on the people on the stage. The spotlight is always on the people in leadership. Forgetting that the followers are the collective group of people who have to perform the decisions as we know, there is no need for leadership unless there are followers. The people that makes leadership happens are the followers. When Jesus first began his ministry, the first thing he did was calling followers. Speaking of Jesus, there was this nice feeling from the Old Testament reading this morning about going into the promised land which associated with the feeling of relief for many Victorians in the last few days. There was a strong affirmation expressed in emotions, you know, in the language of celebrations that the weight of the lockdown has been lifted off our shoulders and we finally on the road to the promised land. But when it comes to the gospel reading from Matthew, I said to myself, thank you Jesus for the kick in the guts for putting preachers and ministers in an uncomfortable situation. <laughs> After all we've been through this year. He said, listen to what they say, but don't do what they do. Very encouraging. <laughs> anyway, I think Jesus is on to something. Leadership is often understood as the role of one person or few people. But Jesus is kind of shedding lights on the collaboration here. As we've talked about leadership in the Old Testament, there is a sense of God's presence through the leadership of certain people. But Jesus is actually putting emphasis on the role of the collective followers. Collaboration is understood as sharing the responsibilities. Listen to what they say, but don't do what they do. So what does it mean? Does it mean they have to listen to the priests, but do not wait until they have done it correctly? Does it mean they must listen and do not wait until they start walking on water so that they can do the same? Or does it mean their journey of faith is heavily depending on them? Jesus' explanation of the situation, he said, they tie up heavy burdens hard to bear and lay them on the shoulders of others, but they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have people call them rabbi. Well, if we can explore what Jesus meant in this text, it could mean that there are values in what they teach, which is worth listening to, but the individual or the follower is responsible for their own faith. Have you ever come across someone who may have said, I am not listening to that preacher because he is not walking the talk? So what hope they have if their faith continues to depend on others rather than putting their own faith into practice? 
Two years ago, I was invited to be part of the committee which went through the process of interviewing moderator nominees for the last uh, Synod meeting. And when we listen to certain people, there are interesting things they said that actually stays with us. I remember certain things about each person and what they said, but this particular person, when he was asked what would be the challenging aspect of the role for him, his answer was, I have to be really careful not to take people where I have not been myself. I think it's kind of similar to what Jesus said. Listen to what they teach you, but do not do what they do. Perhaps it's also the same as don't teach people about something that you haven't been yourself. And maybe that's why most of the times preachers and ministers explain the stories of faith through personal experiences, because that's the only place they have been, including myself. But it doesn't mean the rest of us have to wait for the same experience. We are all hearing the same story with different experiences. And if I have to take something out of it for my own faith development, how would I be doing it? And what I, uh, what I have heard differently as an individual? How would I be doing what I have heard differently as an individual? How do I make sense of the story for my own personal growth and faith development? The understanding of leadership which Jesus brought to the table comparing to the others is collaboration. The disciples are not just followers, but shaped by Jesus to share responsibilities and leadership. That's who we are as Uniting Church. The Uniting Church in Australia is a collaborative community, and you may know this already. Decisions do not depend on the call of certain people but a collective discernment of all followers of Christ. We believe as a church, uniting church, that the Spirit of God moves within us when we share responsibilities and leadership together. It is our belief as a church that leadership is a responsibility of all followers, just as Jesus prepared his disciples. You may not be standing up to lead the service each Sunday or play the piano or do certain things, but you are responsible for the decisions that must happen in the life of the church, not just the church in general, but also our community here at Wesley. Why am I talking about this today? Well, you have to blame Jesus. He brought it up. But anyway, our community is going through a consultation process. And the whole purpose of this exercise is to empower everyone to share in the mission of God. We are the followers of Christ, the people of God on the mission. And mission is not the responsibility of certain people. We as individuals and as a group are on mission wherever we are. Mission is impossible without willingness to exercise leadership. And that's a challenge for us as a community and also as a church in, um, in general. I have never heard the word leadership used elsewhere more than we used within the church. Every time I hear a meeting or service, I hear people say, thank you for your leadership. But I think that sometimes people in the kitchen for um, also taking the leadership in that way because it's not easy um, to be in there serving others, we serve. And that's uh, uh, something that we read from the Old Testament this morning. So through our collective discernment and sharing of responsibilities by using the gifts with, which God has given to us, and there, there we encounter the divine presence of God and miracles can happen when we work together share responsibilities together, and share leadership together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to sing um, our next song, I Know That My Redeemer Leaves.
um, there's a couple of notices for you. I'm just uh, reminding you that in your bulletin, and you might have received a separate email so at the end of last week, uh, reminding you that next Sunday on the um, 8th of November at 10 o'clock in the morning, we won't be having um, a YouTube service, but we will be having a Zoom cafe worship style. And the idea of the, of the Zoom uh, service, uh, worship service, it gives us uh, the space and it gives us the opportunity uh, to be able to share um, as we normally do in our um, cafe worship here at Wesley, but we will be doing it on Zoom. And this is part of uh, the consultation uh, process, as I alluded earlier today. Uh, it's about empowering us um, and resourcing and retraining ourselves um, for our mission here at Wesley and Geelong and for the world in the future. So I encourage you uh, to please uh, join the service on Zoom next uh, Sunday. Um, just a few things um, to note it down in your diary. Um, on the 29th um, of November, the, the family at five or the Wesley at five will have um, a big nick, but it will be at um, Botanic Garden. Um, we're starting with that group uh, to see how we can manage and how we can do outdoor activities. Let me know, please. I think it's important whether you turn up on, on to activities or not, just send an email that you'll be there so that we have a clear idea of how we might plan the day. Um, there is hope for um, men's breakfast at the end of this month. Um, so we will confirm what needs to be done and it will be in the bulletin in, in the next uh, three or four weeks before it happens. Let's offer our prayers of intercession. Let's pray. In these quieter times, God of peace, as in the busyness of our hectic days, you hear the true prayers of not just what we say, but also what we do and who we are. Hear us as we join our hearts in unity to offer prayers for the world. We pray for those who live without meaning and hope, who live as objects of the whims of others and those who live in broken families, broken communities and a broken world. Lead your church, we pray, toward a new vision of our mission to them in Christ, the vision of shalom, both those who are afar off in other lands, but also here, where each of us may encounter them personally. Tender and compassionate friend, give us the assurance that you are here among your people, and the gifts of quiet and rest in this celebration of your word, Enable us with your guidance to be your church and to do your will in our common life together. Pour out your spirit on those who are suffering, especially as we lift to you our own needs and the needs of those whose lives are closely linked with our own. And those we name in the silence of our hearts. Bless us to follow in the paths of those saints who have gone before us in faith, whose steps were taken in the sure and certain comforts of your presence, that we may faithfully glorify you now in your church and your world forever. For these prayers we offer in the name and spirit of Jesus, your Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, thank you all for um, joining our service uh, this morning. And thanks again to those who are here helping out with the recording of our service. So we won't have a recording next uh, Sunday as we will have a Zoom service. Please stand for the blessing. Lord, you have filled our lives now with the strength to do your will with humble hearts and obedient spirits. In Jesus' name, we are sent forth in love. And may the blessings of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and forever. Amen.
May the feet of God walk with you. Thank you.